Hey everyone, today on the Plastic Canvas we're painting two cleavers from Trudvan Legends by Simon Games. Hey everyone, Matt here from The Plastic Canvas and welcome to the second episode in this Trudvan Legends painting series and today we're painting two cleavers. He's one of the enemies that you'll come across in this adventure and exploration game from Simon Games. Now, on the cover of the game you can see that two cleavers is there and he's going to town on Catley and you can see that he's got a fairly normal skin tone. But I wanted to try something with his skin that I haven't done before and that's to create a cool skin tone, or one where it looks as though there's no life left in it. The opposite of this would be to create a warm skin tone by base coating with reds, but as you can see, I'll be starting with greys. Two Cleavers is clearly a bad character, if you want to call it that, and definitely not fully human. So I thought doing a skin tone where the base colors were gray would make it look just off enough to not be natural. So, as you saw, I started by base coating his skin in Stormy Grey, and this is my darkest grey. And now, as you can see, I then put a black wash over that to really darken the recesses so that there'll be a strong contrast between the parts of his skin that are in shadow and the parts that aren't. After laying the black wash down, I realised that I could have also achieved that by just mixing some black into the grey when base coating, but the wash worked fine. Then for the first layer of the highlighting, which I'm doing now, I went back to the stormy grey that I base coated with, but mixed in a little tan skin. I laid this down over most of the areas of the skin, except for the areas that will be in the deepest shadow. I then cleaned off the bristles and left them a little damp, and I feathered out the edges to gradually make them thinner. This allows the tones that are underneath this layer to gradually show through, which creates nice smooth blends. So after that first layer dried, I then mixed in more tan skin and painted it over the same areas as the first layer, but you can see that I'm reducing the amount of area that I covered. That way, the previous layers were still able to show through. And by still feathering out the edges, it keeps the blends from one layer to the next nice and smooth. And then from there, it was just a case of mixing more and more tan skin in each layer, but covering less and less area. It's really important to note though that no layer ever ends up being straight tan skin because I didn't want that much warmth in any of the layers.
So I've just about finished two cleavers skin here and I was really happy with how it came up. There's definitely an unnatural or non-human look to it, but it's still similar enough that it makes it look just off. I would have liked to have gotten some more contrast, but I wasn't sure how to keep going lighter with the skin tone without adding more of the tan skin, so I just left it there. So now as you can see, I'm starting to work on his wounds. What I wanted to do here was to make them look as though they're not totally fresh and that the skin has become swollen and infected. So I started with clotted red, which is one of my darker reds, and I laid it into each gash as well as the area around each one. Then I feathered out the edge of each to blend it back into the skin tone. That makes it look as though there's a red and aggravated area around each wound. So now that that layer has dried, I grabbed bloody red and this is just going into each gash. This is to make it look as though the softer flesh under the skin is still exposed, while the area around the gash has become swollen and painful. Now, what you're seeing here is slightly out of order because I decided to do this after moving on to his clothing, but what I wanted to do was make it look as though each wound was still hanging open by picking out the edge on the underside of each wound in the same colour as his skin. I think the effect ended up working well, but with my first go at it here, I didn't quite colour match correctly and I had too much tan skin mixed in. That just made it look too light. Somewhere down the track, in between other parts, I went back over those edges with a mix with less tan skin to dull it back down, and it ended up looking better. And now what we've moved on to, which did temporarily go back in time, is the fur. This was super simple to paint on two cleavers because there's so much definition in the sculpt, so it was really easy to pick out each individual clump. The key here is contrast, so I base coated with a mix of beastie brown and black so that it starts off nice and dark. Then for the first layer of highlighting, I went to straight beastie brown and picked out every strand of fur so that I left the base coat color showing in the deepest recesses. You can see that I was painting with short sharp strokes so that it gives the impression of texture. And now for the second layer, I've mixed in some skeleton bone to lighten it off. This is going to go down over every strand from the previous layer, but it's only going to cover the bottom half of each strand. This is so that the tip of each strand will end up being lighter. And then with the final layer, which you'll see next, I mixed in more skeleton bone and pretty much just picked out the tip of each strand. This is where the dark base coat is really important because that's what helps create the contrast and make each individual strand of fur stand out.
on to one of my favourite parts to paint on any mini, and that's the leather. I think I enjoy this because of all the different tones that you use and that you can create lots of different effects depending on how aged or worn you want the leather to look. For this leather, I wanted it to look aged and faded because I can't see two cleavers visiting the tanner too often. So just like with the fur from before, the key again is contrast. So we need to start really dark so that the areas that are faded do actually look faded. So to base coat the leather areas, I mixed some black into ruddy leather. Once that had dried, I then went to straight ruddy leather to block in the areas that I want to look faded. This is mainly the edges as they'll get the most sun and will also be what rubs up against things like cave walls that will make them look scuffed. Like with the fur, I'm painting in short sharp strokes to create the look of texture. start to lighten it off and make these areas look more faded, I've mixed some leather brown into the ruddy leather. I'm going to paint over the previous layer, but reduce the amount of surface area so that the different tones are allowed to show through. I'll keep doing this by adding more and more leather brown until I finish with a final layer of straight leather brown that will just go to the edges that I want to look the most faded. Here for the sheath of his sword, I'm just creating a really simple wood effect. So I base coated with Beastie Brown, and then to create some faded areas, I dry brushed lighter and lighter tones by mixing in more and more skeleton bone with each layer. 
Then after I'd done the last layer of the dry brushing, I then put a sepia wash over the top to tint everything a wooden colour, but those different tones from the dry brushing are allowed to show through. With the handle of Two Cleaver's sword, I'd assume that this would most likely be more brown leather, but I wanted to use a colour that was going to contrast with all of the different tones of browns that are around it. So I went with red because even though it's not likely the actual colour of the wrap on the grip, red is a colour that fits pretty easily into a fantasy theme, but it's different enough so that it's able to break up all of the brown that's around it. Now here we've just skipped past a few smaller details, mainly the different bracelets and things he's got on, plus the different trinkets around his neck. There was lots of chopping and changing between different colours that would have made it hard to film, so if you want to see what colours I used, just pause there and have a look. So here I'm starting to work on two cleavers hair, and I decided to make it look as though it's greying to show that he's an old and grizzled troll or ogre or whatever he's actually meant to be. I want him to look as though he's been through and survived a lot of fights, and survived every enemy that's come up against him. So I started with Stormy Grey, my darkest grey, and then I put a black wash over that to darken the recesses. Then I went back to Stormy Grey to pick out the full length of each individual hair. Then I started to make the tip of each hair look as though it was greying by adding cloudy grey into the mix. Each layer retraced each individual hair, but started closer and closer to the tip as it got lighter and lighter. Then eventually I used Misty Grey, my lightest grey, to just paint the very tip of each strand to get that extra bit of contrast. The contrast between the darkness of the hair at the base and the lightness at the tip shows just how much his hair is greyed.
All right, so now I'm getting a start on two cleavers. Well, two cleavers. I wanted them to look old, beaten up, and that they're starting to go a little rusty. This is for a similar reason to why I painted his hair grey. I want him to look like he's been through battle after battle after battle and survived every single one of them. Plus, there's just something a bit scarier about going up against someone with weapons that aren't shiny and new. Because they're such good fighters that they don't need weapons that are shiny and new. So, as you saw, I laid down a base coat of gunmetal, beastie brown and black. This is so that it looks metallic, but has an oxidized tint to it. I used a stabbing or stippling motion so that it would inconsistently allow some of the black prime to show through and add to the beaten up look. Then a black wash went over that to really dull it down and knock off the shine. And now that the wash has dried, I'm going back with the same mix as before, but without the black mixed in. I'm laying it down with the same stippling motion so that it still looks rough. There's no black in this mix so that more of the metallic paint is able to come through. This doesn't cover the surface of the whole weapon because I still want some of the base coat showing through because that's the layer that looks the most aged and beaten up. And now for this layer, it's just straight metallic. This is to create the contrast between what the weapon looked like once upon a time and what it's starting to look like now. You can see that I'm more scraping this along the edge as opposed to stippling, just to make it look as though all the times it's cut deep into something is keeping the edges a little fresher. And now just to finish it off, I'm laying down my Vallejo Rust Wash in different areas to tint some parts that rusty colour even more. I love this wash because the orange tone isn't over the top. It's subtle, so it gives the impression of rust without it looking like it's about to disintegrate into dust. Now this was a part that I knew I was going to be doing before I'd even primed the mini. There has to be some blood dripping off of his sword. So I took the plastic packet of my green stuff and cut some very thin strips. It's important that it's as thin as you can do it or the thickness of the drips can very easily look way out of scale. I cut the strips to different lengths and then super glued them on to where I thought the blood would drip from. Then, once it had dried, I used blood for the blood god to cover up each strip, and then onto the blade itself to create a bit of a spatter pattern. If there's anything that I've learnt from painting blood, it's that less is more. Just like the rest of the mini, the blood needs to be scaled down too, so just gradually build it up until you're happy with how it looks. Along the blade, I put it down a bit thicker on the edge itself and then used a mix of swipes and blobs to make it look as though the blood has smeared and spattered as it's cut into whatever was two cleavers last victim. I find it really tricky to get the splatter pattern to look right. When I see pictures of it done well, I really wish I could do it like that. It's just not an effect that I do very often. I definitely think I did a better job of the blood on the cleaver here, but I love the way that the dripping blood off the sword makes it look like two cleavers has just killed something and is ready for more.
And so just as I do the last few details to the base, two cleavers is finished. Even though there weren't too many different parts to this mini, because quite a lot of him is skin, I was really happy with how he turned out, and I like trying something new by doing that colder skin tone. I think that, paired with the rusting and bloodied weapons, makes him look like a pretty formidable opponent. So thank you very much for taking the time to check out another one of my videos. I really do hope you've found something that you can take away and use in your own painting. But that's going to do us for today, so until next time, this is Matt from The Plastic Canvas signing out. Happy painting everyone. Cheers.